Hi everybody, welcome back. I'm Kushan. Um, so today I have a little bit of a surprise in that I will be streaming command version or the beta for command version 1.11. Now the usual uh, disclaimer does apply. This is a beta and so there will in all likelihood be some bugs. Um, so just to get that out of the way. And I will be showing off a ton of the new features for um, version 1, 1.11, I'm sorry. Um, but, and I'll get to that as we kind of go ahead through this. So the, uh, kind of the, uh, the big features, I think a lot of people already know, you know, the new Winchester and shotgun, um, changes the above, uh, ground settings. Um, but what most people don't know, and that there was a blog on from Warfare Sims this morning is... And if I could actually grab the window, peer operations. You can now basically use all those peers and actually basically rearm, repair, refuel ships at peers now. And I was actually playing around with this this morning, and it's just awesome. It is probably one of uh, my <laughs> something I've really wanted for a long time, and uh, it's finally there, and it's just as awesome as uh, you would think. So I'll. I'll kind of be showing that off a little bit later. But what I really want to show off right now is actually the performance increases. Um, um, so here what I've got is I have Havana Daydream by Felton, 20, or uh, set in the year 2017. And I'm going to, I've upgraded this to the latest uh, database. So it is uh, running current. Um, although this was, I believe, made before there was things like engagement zones and all of that. What I re like I said, what I really want to show off here basically is just the uh, the performance increase because before, or I I've tried actually doing this while recording before and it basically ran at a chug. And now I'm going to show off basically that it is playable even for me while streaming. And uh, that'll open up a uh, just imagine what it'll what scenario sizes can be without uh you know without taking that whole the hit from streaming out of the equation so and then uh, i guess another big thing which i don't think there has actually been a blog on is that uh, uh i actually have a features list over here um is that there is now a uh, air and naval base recon for hosted units um, basically means that when you fly a basically a plane, a recon plane or a satellite over base, you can actually basically get recon data. And I believe that also applies to basically if you drop a like special, like an infantry unit or a special forces team basically next to a base, they can also observe. And there's all sorts of uh, connotations with that as well. So let's go ahead and uh, just kind of get started here. Sorry, I'm really excited. Um, about this uh this is prop every time i think that the devs can't top themselves they somehow end up topping themselves all right so what do we have here so our task basically is going to be to eventually neutralize cuba over here um, basically cuba has entered into alliance with iran north korea russia you know all those big bad guys um, the usual suspects um, and our area of risk, we are playing the South uh, Com Commander. So we actually have, we've got some uh, the bomber bases at Dyes and Barksdale, um, which are uh, B1 and B52 bases. We've got F-22 Raptors over here at Tyndall Air Force Base. And then we have, we did have a carrier task force, but our carriers suffered a uh, an engineering casualty so her escorts were sent along ahead without her air group so which means we've got the carrier San Juancito along with uh, three uh, or an, I'm sorry we've got the USS Gettysburg as well along with two early Burke class destroyers and then we've got a number of kind of uh, LCS groups kind of scattered around and then we have several kind of Coast Guard frigates. Now there is basically, uh, in this scenario, there's basically kind of a storm, a hurricane coming in. So our main task is going to basically be to protect merchant shipping. So I'm just kind of checking out all those. Basically I'll get a little uh, Marine Patrol craft. And then for air bases, we've got Homestead Air Force Reserve Base. So we've got some 
basically some F-16s. And then we have two squadrons of F-15C Eagles. Mainly armed. The uh, F-16s looks like they're mainly set up for strike loadouts with the F-15s being uh, the air-to-air -air component. Um, we've got McDill Air Force Base, which has um, sentries, strato tankers, so it's going to be our support base. J-Stars. So area surveillance. And I thought there was another base. Oh, I'm sorry. We've got uh, Naval Air Station Key West down here. Zoom in. So it's got a Patriot battery guarding it. And this actually has, so we've got some F5E, F5E Tiger IIs set up with uh, Python 3 air-to-air -air missiles. Ah, oh, those are old. Um, so I'm assuming these are basically like uh, trainers that they've uh, basically turned into operational use. We've got some uh, Super Hornets split between air-to-air uh, -air and uh uh, destruction of enemy air defense loadouts. And then we've got some normal F-18 D Hornets, which are the... Uh, the Ds are the uh, Marine version of the Hornet, of the C variant. And we've got their arm for strike with JSOWs and some Harpoons. And then we've got some Growlers. And we've got several units for... that are under maintenance and unavailable. Oh, let's go ahead and get started. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some... Uh, first thing I want to do, deselect all reference points just to make sure I don't have anything selected. And then I'm going to add... Oh yes, thank you uh, MC for pointing it out. Um, these little uh, symbols now on air bases actually indicate uh, which one of your air bases now has uh, aircraft at it. So, for instance, uh, we've got a yellow symbol there at Homestead, and um, I don't think there's a base that doesn't have. Yeah. Oh, here's an example. So up here, you can see that Naval Air Station Jacksonville, which has Pete Poseidon's at it, has the little yellow icon. But then you go over here to Mayport, and it doesn't have the little icon indicating that there is no aircraft based at it. So you can actually quickly tell now which uh, bases have. Um, aircraft. So I want to set up some missions. I don't want to get too close to Cuba. Actually, let's use some existing. I don't want to get too close because there are several sand batteries on the island. We have. What are these? These are guidelines. Um, it doesn't actually show us our their weapon range for whatever reason. Probably because it's uh, not hostile to us. And they have also have some SA-3s, more SA-3s, more SA-3s or SA-2s. I know for a fact, or I'm pretty sure, they've got a Chinese radar. I'm pretty sure that there's actually some uh, modern SAMs that are actually hidden from my view. So I don't want to get too close to them right now. So I'm going to set up kind of a patrol mission here. And do that. That'd be good. I'm going to set up patrol air to air. Uh, the polygon crosses itself. Okay, so what that means is that my it'll actually give you a warning now when you get something like this for your patrol zone so i just have to uh try and find a so 372 all right so we're gonna go clockwise so we've got 4950 or 3490 3488 3351, 3702, and there we go. So there's our new patrol zone.
And then here you can actually see the uh, new air to above ground level changes. Um, that's been quite a bit expanded. Um, you no longer just have, you know, throttle overrides and altitude overrides. You now have uh, transit altitude, station altitude, attack, and attack distance. Um, and then for submarines, you actually have transit depth, station to deck, and an attack depth. So if you want to, you know, move between stations at, say, deep, and then you want it to, say, your, your sub to kind of go above the layer for attacking, you can do that. And then you also have the same sort of setups for uh, ship speeds. So it's actually all broken out. And then we've got uh, the new uh, tanker uh, stuff, which we'll be dealing with when we set up our, uh, our air missions. So I want... I'm going to assign my eagles to this mission. And as you can see, it's actually... Make it that bigger. I don't want to assign my unavailable units to this mission. So all of my F-15 Eagles are assigned to this mission. I'm going to keep one third rule active. I'm not going to actually, I am going to set up an uh, prosecution zone for them. So deselect that. So their prosecution zone. Fine area. There we go. So it'll look something like that. Ugh. And that's just as bad as my. Uh... All right, so 350, or so 372. Take 3351 out of there. Remove that one. 3372. Probably would have been easier if I would have just have set up uh, my own patrol points instead of trying to reuse them, but that's fine. There we go. There's going to be our prosecution zone. And I'm going to add 5 1 back in there. There we go. That's a nice polygon there. So there's our mission. One third rule is going to be active. We have 21 eagles assigned to this mission. And that looks good. Investigate contacts outside of patrol area. There we go. So we got that. I'm going to reuse some of these points over here. Get our AEW up. Oh. Actually, I'm going to move these guys a little closer. Let's do a patrol zone like that. Oh, didn't mean to hit start. And we'll assign... Where are my sentries? Alright, there, I believe all four of them are available, so keep one on station at any one time. Your mission doctrine is set to active. And then over here, actually, if uh, this was actually noted in the uh, Warfare Systems blog, but now over here you can select uh, for ships when they withdraw and redeploy, which basically means when they withdraw and when they basically uh, head back to a uh, port facility. And uh, you can also set when they'll actually leave the port facility. So there's our AEW. We want another mission. I'm going to call this... feeling and that is where I will assign our strato tankers they are going to be one on station at any one time continuous loop 
And so inherited allow air to air refueling if available to extend combat radius. So I do want that selected. And let's go under mission doctrine. And we can see. A jettison ordinance. Fuel state RTB. When the first unit reaches fuel state. Okay, we're not using. Right, that's all good. So our tankers will allow uh, basically to extend the fuel radius, which basically means that if we were, say, striking a target, say, over here, what it would allow us to do is to basically send a strike. You know, if we had a basically, if we were, say, launching a uh, strike from Naval Air Station Key West and we were trying to, say, hit uh, New Orleans over here, and if our aircraft couldn't reach that distance, we could. Uh, put a refueling uh, aircraft right here in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico, and then our uh, strike aircraft would refuel there before continuing on to New Orleans, I believe is how that's meant to work. Um, so we have our tanker planner here. Um, we're not going to be using a lot of these. Airborne receivers can book tankers within receivers tactical range. There's a lot of new settings here that's, um, or you can actually assign tankers to specific missions. So if you don't want, say, your fighters basically using up, um, using up uh, tankers that you had specifically uh, sent airborne on a mission to basically refuel your airstrike or uh, your strike units, then you could actually, uh, yeah, do that. But we're not going to mess with any of those. I don't think. Uh, Maximum number of receivers in the queue per tanker. I don't think we need to change that. You can also set it uh, when they start when your uh, receivers start looking for a tanker when down to percent of their mission fuel. Actually, I'm uh, I'm actually planning on something uh, like that, MC. Um, as soon as I uh, actually. Uh, Hit start here. All right, so I think that's everything I care about at the moment. Oh, I do want one more mission here. Get my J stars up, and then that'll be the last mission, and then I'll actually get going here. So one third roll. Nope. Continuous loop. Just one aircraft. And another th thing new is you can actually set um, mission activation and deactivation times over here off the side not just whether a mission is active or inactive. Although this may have been this may have been new in uh, version 1.10, I actually can't recall. All right, so let's get started here. So I'm going to play this with a 15 second uh, time compression and as you can see, it's actually, you know, running fairly smooth and we've already got our first vampires. So Commander Southcom. Havana Pact issued notice to Mariners at 0500 Zulu. The notice in part states any ship entering or leaving the Gulf of Mexico shall be considered carrying a U.S. flag for purpose of determining neutrality. No overt threat of attack associated with this notice. Take appropriate action to protect U.S. and neutral uh, merchant shipping. All right, so our... And actually, one other thing I want to do. Go to our air-to-air -air mission. Let's get our. Let me get my Super Hornets actually in on this. I don't want my F 15s having to fight alone out there. I think that's it. We'll save my Raptors for when I bring in the bombers. Oh, yeah. Thanks, MC. Let's uh, go take a look at uh, something else that's new, is that we now have this game speed uh, tab under the options where you can configure uh, basically uh, all of the new, uh, basically this, basically how, you know, what you wanted to uh, basically uh, do. So high fidelity mode has basically been moved in here. 
um, no pulse mode. So it's actually that's actually been removed off the taskbar. Although the no pulse mode is, but uh, high fidelity bones in here now. Um, display country and city names. So that's now in here. We have a uh, semi transparent Kansas for message log. So if you uh, want to turn that off, you can actually see through the message log now. And, oh, yep, there it is. So if you want your game speed uh, button, there it goes and it brings up the game speed menu. And then you can also actually turn off your auto save, although, um, you know, which will free up CPU. Although to be honest, I really don't recommend ever turning off auto save. I mean, you just never know when it's gonna happen. And you can also, this is also where you can actually disallow um, switching to high performance power scheme. Um, I want mine to switch to high performance power scheme, so I'm going to leave that unchecked. But basically, this, uh, as it says, deselects CPU intensive features to uh, reduce your uh, computer workload and improve your game execution speed. Although, to be honest, like at least on my machine, like even when I'm streaming here, I have pretty much everything checked. And I mean, this scenario is, you know, and I'm streaming right now, which is, you know, no real hit. But I mean, as you can see, I mean, things are still moving. It's a little choppy. But, I mean, it's far from actually unplayable. I mean, and even if I turn this down to five seconds. All right, so we are losing our F-15s. This is a disappointing... Over the last 38 years, the F-15 has accumulated an air-to-air -air combat ratio of 104 victories to zero losses. This is a disappointing and historic event. Oops. Well... And that is a lot of hostile air. All right, so we're going to declare all these hostile. Like, we know all those are hostile. So not sure why all my merchants got declared hostile, though. I don't want to do that. Mark is neutral. Oh, I think because I selected a merchant ship when I... Uh, Yeah, those are hostile. Yeah, I actually selected a merchant when I was uh, doing that. So anyways, let's go there. Now all my uh, fighters are coming up. Huge missile engagement. And I mean, I'm running at 5% compression here. And I mean, as I pointed out, it's a little choppy. But I mean, this is far from actually unplayable. I mean, I can still click on everything. It brings, you know, everything up pretty much right at once. All right, so we're losing some Super Hornets. I thought I turned this off last night, but let's go here. I don't need a pop-up for a unit loss. That just kind of gets uh, annoying after a while, especially in a, in a scenario like this where you know you're going to be using having a lot of losses. And so let's just see here. Let's go mess with some of these new speed settings. So let's see. Pause the game. So let's turn off show ghosted. What happens if I just unclick all of this stuff here? You know, see, so the, I turned my game speed from uh, red to, in fact, yellow. Which does make it a little bit more choppy. But it is actually simulating uh, the scenario a little better. I'm going to turn at least those high fidelity and pulse mode back on. Which seems to be kind of the main culprit here as far as... Uh, Wow, I'm taking massive losses. I think I sh pretty much should have just launched everything and uh, not turned off one third. Basically get everybody airborne. 
And actually, what I'm going to do here, let's go ahead and let's get my bombers airborne. So we have six available B-52s. We'll launch them in groups of three. And they're armed with uh, JASMs. And then we'll get the same thing for my B-1s. They are armed with uh, JASMs with sniper pods. Which we'll launch them in groups. And let's get my Raptors airborne. So even though we're in the red, we're, we are, you know, running fairly smooth here. Although I am taking just a crap ton of air of air losses, mainly my own fault for uh, not just scrambling everybody at once. Um, and let's go ahead and change uh, Doctor Nun you. You are free to fire. Okay, so we have a F-18. Basically, he's, uh, well, he's actually looks like he's landing. All right, so bombers are up. Send them general's direction of the Gulf of Mexico. And one thing I do want to select in game settings is only show for selected group and only show selected group plotted path. There we go. I like that much better. Alright, so let's get the raptors kind of uh, sent down here. Um, actually, good point, MC. Thank you. So let's go under my mission settings. And go to so weapon release. I like those. Yeah, your mission is free to fire. Actually, to be honest, with all the new changes, it's actually really hard to keep track of actually where everything is uh, at these days. Um, I think we're good. Oh, general tab. Thanks, MC. Oh. Um. All 
right, so F22s are inbound. And we've still got a pretty furious missile engagement going on over here. Um, Uh, oh yeah, so we got Jettison Ordnance. So you can't actually change, uh... thanks MC, sorry, I'm kind of a little bit out of it this morning. So over here we have our weapon state pre-planned. So we can set, this is where you can set your uh, shotgun and Winchester settings. So in this case, all BVR standoff weapons have been expended. Allow oh, well, easy targets of opportunity within within visual range or strike weapons and air-to-air -air guns. Let's go ahead and set our shotgun to that. So we'll mainly want, uh, yep, weapon state pre-plan. That's what we wanted. Thank you, MC. Um, so you can actually do one engagement, 25%. Um, I really just wanted as soon as my one game of BVR standoff weapons. Um, let's just do all all BVR. I don't want them to uh, expend stuff. There we go. Still a pretty intense uh, air battle down here. Pretty sure I lost most of my naval air wing. Yeah, most of my Super Hornets are gone. But there's just a lot of... Uh... Alright, so where is my F-22s at? 22s are inbound. And somebody's actually coming in to take a shot at my... Uh, MiG-31 Foxhound has actually uh, found my uh, my tankers and my J-Stars. That's not good. Closest aircraft incoming is my F-22s, and they're still a ways away. All right, so B-1s, B-2s are incoming. A good point, MC. Uh, lowering up my engagement on uh, over here, if I would have uh, selected this for the pre-plan. If I would have selected one engagement with my beyond visual range weapons, I probably would have uh, had a lower loss rate right there at the start, but at this point in time, it looks like I'm starting to kind of get a handle on things. You're neutral. You're neutral. Pretty sure Disney would appreciate not blowing up their Disney fantasy uh, um, cruise liner. So we've lost my J stars. His radar is active. F-22s are incoming. Let's see if we can actually get them to catch him. Go to cruise. Um, one of the cruise ships just took a torpedo hit from somebody.
Yeah, we really don't care about that right now. We're really just trying to show off the uh, speed increase here. All right, so we've got additional strato tankers coming up. Oh, uh, crap. We've got a fighter that somehow made it. Oh, that's our service group. Our, our service group over here is actually firing on those fighters. Awesome. Let me guess those are SM... ERAMs. SM6s. Go SM6s. You have Cuban fighters all over southern Florida right now. Yep, very uh very simple scenario, uh SSN. I'm uh I'm really just trying to uh show off kind of the uh, speed improvements of uh version one point one one. Okay, so where are our, okay, so B1s, B2s are still inbound. Let's look at their fuel. I want to make sure that nobody, okay. Nobody looks like they're going to be running out of fuel anytime soon. 18 hours of fuel left on them. Plenty of time to get these guys within range. Probably shouldn't have uh, generally marked everything as hostile. All right, so I pretty much have lost uh, air superiority over uh, southern over the Florida Keys. All right, Raptors, get to it. Go go. Oh, it's it's actually running uh, very well, SSN. Um, I've actually tried playing this uh, scenario before while recording, and it was actually physically unplayable. But here I am. I'm running. Uh, got you know units all over the place. It is. We're up to eight eight hundred and eighty nine unit count right now, with a fairly. I mean, not with a pulse time that's really kind of bouncing all over the place. But I mean, overall, it's it's not bad at all. It's it's actually really good. So we'll play this for uh, let this run for just a couple more minutes here, and then I'm going to switch over to kind of show off the uh, the new uh, uh, peer or, or uh, peer side operations. Uh. Oh yeah, pulse times would be much better if I was running one second, but I. So yeah, I mean, uh, pulse times kind of come down into something a little bit more, I don't want to say reasonable, because 
I think all things considered, uh, with what how much I have running right now, um, I think uh, f the five second pulse times was pretty good, all things considered. Okay, so I don't want my raptors getting uh, break off, break off. I don't want you guys getting too close to Cuba. Oh, I lost a raptor. No. Uh, that's pretty crappy. Now, remember what I was just saying about possible bugs? I think I actually just locked the scenario. Let's see. Yeah, pulse times just went way through the roof. Not quite sure what this is. Let's see, can I actually get that to go down? Mm -hmm. Give me just a second. I'm pretty sure something's happened here that I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, Go and save that, and I'll actually upload that to the uh, devs here after we're over. Yep, MC, I will uh, send that over uh, as soon as I am done with the stream. I'll uh, go ahead and post that to the beta forum.